How's it going everybody? My name is Jim and welcome to Restoration Projects. Today's video we are going to be repairing this bow door pedestal grinder. Uh, we're going to be fixing one of the tool rests that has been broken so we're going to braze it back together and we're also going to be adding a VFD so this can be run on that single phase power input. So this grinder is a three phase grinder and is also three horsepower 12 inch grinder. Um, Weighs roughly 250 pounds, give or take. Um, this is a little bit older version. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that paint is not original. It's probably been painted at one point in its life. You can see what looks to be some overspray there on the name tag. One thing to note with a bigger grinder like this, these 12 inch grinders are designed to run at slower RPM than say a 6 inch or 8 inch grinder. And the reason being from what I found looking online on some of the online forums were a bigger wheel has more mass to it and you don't want to have that spinning at such a high rpm and plus when you have a bigger wheel there's going to be more surface area that's going to be used for grinding so um, it just doesn't need to spin as fast as a smaller six inch wheel so i thought about overclocking it with a vfd so i could get you know use it for buffing or add other things to it but then after doing some research I found that that probably wasn't going to be the best idea. We all like to push things a little bit further than what they're supposed to be, but for some things like this, it's a good idea to keep it within the manufacturer's specs. Right there, what I'm doing is I'm taking that piece of metal, lining it up so it can go on that backing plate there, and I've taken it over to my uh, bridge port here, and I'm drilling some holes in here, and these holes are going to line up with that backing plate. Now, that backing plate is designed to hold the starter box. And my plan is to set the VFD on top of the starter box using this bracket. So we're just drilling out the holes here and then we'll be able to mount the VFD. The VFD is a little bit wider than this chunk of metal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark off the two screw holes on the one side there. So you can see I have it mounted up there, held on with some clamps. And using a center punch, I'm just marking off the holes. And once I get those holes drilled out and tapped, then I'm going to add two tabs on the other side and so weld on a couple chunks of steel. That way we can have it attached at all four corners. So here I just use a hand drill to drill out those sides. They've been drilled out and now I'm adding these tabs in here. I could have used a bigger piece of metal, but I didn't have one, didn't want to go buy one. So just adding on some tabs there seemed like it would do the trick. Does it look the best? No, but it's going to get the job done in this case. It's going to provide a solid mount for this VFD. VFD doesn't weigh a lot, so you don't need a ton of structural rigidity there. It's just here to hold it on. I have pre-marked where the holes need to be for this, and I am also putting in uh, screw threads in here. So I'm using my impact gun with a combination drill screw uh, attachment. You can get them on Amazon and it is a tap and a drill bit integrated into one. And you are running the risk when using an impact gun to drive them in, but it works fine for thin sheet metal like this. And here I am just screwing in the VFD in the mount. And now we can focus our attention to fixing the broken arm that supports the tool rest. So what I'm using is just a cutoff wheel to try to carve out some of the material along the crack so there is room for the brazing material to go down in there. Um, but I will just uh, cut to the chase. This first attempt I did fail at this because I did not cut a deep, deep enough groove in there to allow that braze to get in there all the way. Also, I don't think I had it hot enough. Um, I probably should have been using a rosebud uh, on a torch here instead of this pinpoint one. And I only used one stick of uh, brazing rod on this go around here. And I just was really struggling to get it to wet in. I don't think I had the part hot enough. And uh, full disclosure, this is probably the, I don't know, fifth time that I've ever uh, brazed anything like this, like cast iron. So. I am learning as I'm going here, and this was definitely trial by error, and this one did not end up working uh, as good as I thought it would. So here's uh, the result. You can see a little bit of wiggle there, and it is going to snap off. And there it goes. So you can see I did not have enough penetration there. I did not properly prepare my material before I brazed it, 
And uh, this is the result there. You just don't get enough of that uh, brazing filler rod into the crack there. And it was only holding it on the outside. So lesson learned there. I'm going to need to add some more heat and also properly prepare my material beforehand. So this next go around here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a die grinder and I'm going to grind off both sides of it. So I'm going to bevel the edges. That way there's more room for that uh, braze to go in there. So what I'm using is I'm using a rod called silicon bronze. It's not a flux core one. It is just a uh, regular uncoated. And now I'm going to try using my uh, TIG machine here. So you can see I have it set to 145 amps. That's probably hotter than what I should be running to that, but I do have a foot control. So that's just if I need to add some more heat temporarily, I can. And this time I felt like I had a lot more control of the uh, puddle as I'm going in there. It was wetting in a lot better. And if you're unfamiliar with brazing, it's the idea is to heat the base material to where the filler rod will melt and attach to it, but you're not wanting to uh, melt the parent material. So you just want to melt the uh, silicon bronze because it has a lower melting point than steel. And you can also use it to join dissimilar metals. Brazing is a excellent choice for repairing cast iron because cast iron does not like to be welded. As when you weld cast iron, it will cause stress fractures and cause the material to be more brittle. So brazing is the preferred way to repair cast iron parts. Um, once again, this is not a how-to welding video. I am far from an expert. I am a novice at best. I am a, just learning how to do this. Like I said, I've done under 10 of these, and this is just me learning how to do it. This is just my way of documenting the process here. So here's a finished product, and you can see I used a lot more brazing material there. You can see a little bit of porosity right there. Um, those little holes there, I don't know if that's because it was not cleaned the material beforehand or if I got the base material too hot and causing it to melt and interact with the silicon bronze which will give you those little holes there. So I uh, do have some porosity at that spot right there. But the rest of it, it looks like it's wetted in pretty well and I had a lot deeper V-groove um, channels cut in there so I took out most of the material with a, a die grinder and this allows that silicon bronze to flow in there better. I also had this a lot hotter using a TIG machine than I did using the oxyacetylene torch so I don't know if that is what helped draw that uh, silicon bronze deeper into the crack. Um, again I'm not a welding expert I don't claim to be I've done like I said under 10 of these this is just me taking you guys along for the ride and you guys get to watch my mistakes and hopefully learn from them because um, it's one of those things where the only way you're going to get better is by practice and um, I learn a lot from YouTube. A lot of the stuff that I do in my shop, I watch a video instructionally on YouTube and then I go out and I practice it. So hopefully this uh, encourages you guys to get out there and go play in the shop and try some new things. Get out of your comfort zone. I definitely did doing this repair. So now we are just putting everything back together here, and uh, these big industrial grinders, um, they're just awesome. Uh, I, the amount of material and meat that's on them, when you're putting it together compared to a flimsy uh, stamped metal tool rest that you see on smaller grinders, um, there's just something satisfying about heavy cast iron machinery like this, um, because you know it's not going to you know, flex or bend or break easily it's uh it's solid so it's very enjoyable to work with now that we have it all put back together we're going to try it out for the first time so this is just a piece of one inch by one inch square tubing here and um, i could not bog this thing down i laid into it pretty hard the wheel that i'm grinding on there is probably a 40 grit wheel um, it's definitely not the 12 inch diameter that it used to be it's ground down quite a bit but um, I could not bog it down. And the same thing when using the wire wheel here. I was putting some major torque into it, trying to slow it down, and this thing just kept chewing through it. So, very happy with this. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, please smash that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. And have a great day.